in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, we're coming. Those who are coming on the way, those who are going to be a part of this, you know, in another few seconds or so, those who are going to join, or those who are, who are going to watch in the future, in the name of Jesus, they shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Also, for the last time, I'd like to also pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you, you know, inspired to pray in the Holy Ghost, if you have the ability to pray in the Holy Ghost, just try it and do so. Yes, Lord, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's be seated. Amen. I found like the Lord would say, sit down and not go down. Let's go. Sit down and not go down. Amen. Hallelujah. Please let's grab our notes. I see we all have our notepads. I want to see notes. Those who are watching online, grab your notepads. It's very important for what God is about to do. As we know, this is a forum to give us the platform to be able to groom others, to be able to teach others, to be able to guide others. Okay? And it requires that we that have been appointed to show ourselves, you know, to be leaders indeed, praise God, to be those who are going to lead by example, okay, not just talk the talk, but live the life, praise God, we live the life, the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, we walk by the Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So this time I'm just going to quickly go over those who are here right now. We have Brother Peter. We have Sister Success. We have Lady Apostle. Amen. Who has a joint? Amen. We have Sister Karen. Uh, we have Sister Rebecca. We have Sister Miriam. Everybody on time today. So God be the glory for that. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is a program that requires us to, to, you know, set a high standard for ourselves. You know, a high standard. It's very important for us to set a high standard. One of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing is to make sure that everything is done decently and orderly. Because some of you here, by the grace of God, I'm believing God by next year, some of you will be anointed before the whole congregation as a minister. Okay, some of you are going to be doing things you've never done before. You know, everyone here, you've been a member of this church for more than three years. Everybody here. For more than three years. So you've been learning, not just from this ministry. Some of you, you've also gone extra miles. You, you've developed your capacity, and that's great. You know, sometimes we may have the opportunity to do all that and not be in a place where we can be ordained. Mm. Because you still need some level of uh, anointing before the great congregation, you know, to be empowered. Remember, Jesus was baptized of John the Baptist. And after Jesus was baptized of John the Baptist, the Bible said, a voice came from heaven. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bible quickly to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6. We're going to take it from verse 5. I just want to show you what it means to put this in order. You know, the, the truth of the matter is that the fact that someone has been a member of the church for many years does not qualify them to lead other people. It is their attitude, their eagerness, their willingness, their desire, okay, and their growth. Praise God, their willingness their desire, you know, their growth, their character, 
That's what takes them there. Praise God. So it's not how, how far, it is how well. Okay, you can have someone who has been a member of an organization for many years and not have anything to show for it. But I'm praying that the power of God shall be manifested in our lives like never before in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's read this together. Second Samuel chapter 6 from verse 5. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of firewood, even on harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on comets, and on cymbals. The six. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah, can we say Uzzah? Uzzah. Uzzah put forth his hand to the heart of God and took hold of it. For the oxen shook, for the oxen shook him. Verse 8. Let's go to the next verse. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a bridge upon Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Per Peri Zusa to this day. Can we go back to verse 7? Did I skip something? Oh, yeah, this is where I was going to read. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the heart of God. Now, trying to let us know that the things of God, there must be orderliness. Okay? There must be the, the foundation for which we allow people to do certain things. There has to be uh, a template that's got to be followed. Amen. Because the, the level God is taking us to now is a greater level than we've ever been before. We're going to be having mighty hands, many hands, helping the work to move forward. And we're not just going to put anybody there. Praise God. We're not just going to put anybody there. We're going to find people who are willing, people who are obedient. Not people who are just going to come and just feel like they could do anything of their own. They can be corrected. They can be guided. They are not teachable. Those are not the type of people who want to lead over God's people. Praise God. We want people who are submissive. We want people who are correctable. We want people who will demonstrate the word of God that they, they, they hear. Praise God. We don't want to raise ministers of God who are going to be good preachers of the word. But they themselves are not living what they are preaching. We don't want to raise people like that. Now, if you look at, um, there's something I want to show us real quick. I think I'm going to get that in a second. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Hallelujah. Are we there? 1 Corinthians, did I say chapter 14? Let's call it 4 0. Four zero. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Hallelujah. Let's read together. Let all things be done decently and in order. There are some places you will go to. Everybody does things anyhow they want. Praise God. Anybody just handles the mic microphone. Anybody just you know, talks anyhow to the pastor. You know, there's no orderliness. There's no, you know, and with God, there has to be order. When Jesus walked through the street of Jerusalem, when Jesus went to the temple, he saw that in the temple, there should be a house of prayer. He saw that people were selling things. He saw that people uh, were not uh, honoring the place that was meant for prayer. The first, Jesus, the first thing Jesus did 
in the midst of all the fanfare, the celebrations around him, was to put order. Jesus tossed everything. He turned the tables upside down. He said, no, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you guys have turned into a den of thieves. So there has to be orderliness in the household of faith. Amen. So the level God is taking us to requires us to be more accountable. Praise God. Not just accountable to the pastorate, amen, but also accountable to yourself. You want to make any decision, you, you have to realize that hey, I'm not ordinary anymore. Okay, I can't just do, make decisions the way I used to make decisions. I have been called apart to render service to God's people. I've been called apart to serve God's people. It could be through teaching, it could be through any other thing. Praise God. There are so many areas where we can serve in the house of faith. And so you, you must always be mindful of that, that I'm called to serve. Amen. Very, very important. There you go. And you say, I'm called to serve. I'm called to serve. Uh -huh. and, and in the household of faith, if there's anything that is needed in the church, okay, besides, you know, tangible things, like what you can see, maybe like the microphone, maybe like the TV, maybe like the computers. We thank God for Sister Miriam and Brother Peter, those in Buffalo, Brother Peter and other people that have continued to support the church and providing what the church needs. I want to celebrate God for every one of you. Brother Peter, thank you. Sister Miriam, those in Buffalo, Sister Karen, Sister uh, Miriam, uh, Sister Rebecca as well, all the things you keep the church, including the gifts. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. So it's important for us to, to know that the level God is taking us to is a level of service. It's a level of service. And in service comes sacrifice. You can't serve without sacrificing. Okay? You can't serve without sacrificing. And the, the, you know, we are told that to whom much is given, much is expected. Let's look at the book of Acts, chapter 6. Acts chapter 6, verse 3. And before I even talk about that one, I'm just going to dwell here for a second. Let all this be done decently and in order. order. As a worker, praise God, because we all are workers in the household of faith. Okay, the things of God, you must do them decently and orderly. Okay? You know, there have been times I've seen some people handle the offering bag. They handle the offering bag without reverence to God. You know, when I look at that, I'm like, this thing is a sacred thing to God. You can't just, you know, you want to collect offering and you, you hold it as if you're holding some 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 funny cup, praise God, or some, some funny thing, praise God. You hold it with reverence, you know, with the mindset of this is holy unto God. This is not something you play with. You can't just have this one beside you and put your phone. I want to just put your phone temporarily inside. <laughs> For instance, because it, yeah, that's the that's the son of unto God. Praise God. You can't just put this one. Let's say we wanted to move from here and put it somewhere else. You can't just take this thing and put it in your bag, your handbag, temporarily. It's the only thing unto God. There are things we gotta do decently and orderly in the household of faith. Everything we want to do is going to be done decently and orderly, and we must be accountable. We must be accountable at all times. All right. So, the other thing I want to share with us is in Acts chapter 6. Let's look at Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Let's read this together. Wherefore, brethren, Looking out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Look at that. Seven men of honest report. You and I, we must have honest reports. Amen. You and I, because God is appointing us to this day. We must have honest report. Now, 
You might be wondering what's going on here. Let's look at verse 2 of Acts chapter 6. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Now, this was referring to the apostles. Let's go to verse 1. We we might as well just read it from the beginning to the end. Verse 1. We are going to verse 12. It's good to keep an eye on what you're doing up there as well. All right. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, amen, the number of the disciples was multiplied, and there arose murmuring of the Christians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Let's focus, please. I'm going to read this one more time. Verse 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Christians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Now, there was some ministerial work going on, God bless you. And as the ministerial work was going on, some people began to complain that we were neglected. So this is what the apostles had to do, verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. The next verse. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Is your report good? Because God is, is appointing you to be able to serve over his business. When I talk about report, I'm talking about our character. I'm talking about what we do outside of church. I'm talking about other report that people can give concerning us. Okay, if somebody speaks to my mom now or speaks to my dad, they should be able to hear some good report of me. Praise God. You know, sometimes family members may not be, <laughs> you may not want to get your recommendations sometimes from family members. Praise God. But you understand what I'm trying to say? You know, your colleagues at work should be able to say you're a good guy. You know, you're a good lady. You know, when when, when some, somebody, sometimes when you're, you're working with somebody for some time and they find out that you're a Christian, they should be like, no wonder, no wonder you're so, you know, you know, forgiven, you're so kind. They should be able to say this like that. They shouldn't be able to say this like this. Christian? Seriously? You know, because our attitude is not portrayed. Because our attitude is not portrayed you know, what we profess ourselves to be. You know, and that's not good. We must be of honest report. The Bible says, full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We must be full of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to do another session where I'm going to talk about being impacted with the, you know, you know, the ability to speak in tongues, you know, and I'm going to go into the Word and I'm going to believe God for His power to move. You know, like never before. I was invited to speak in a ministry in a church uh, one time, and there were about 37 people in attendance. And of the 37 people, only two of them, actually about four, four of them spoke in tongues. By the time I was done with the ministration, guess how many people spoke in tongues? All of them. All of them. So I'm going to teach it the way I taught it. Praise God, and I'm going to demonstrate, you know, you know, the power of God as God has revealed to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, so it's very important that we have honest report. That cannot be overemphasized. Now, this is not something that this is not uh, uh, an assignment you carry, you know, and not begin to evaluate your life. Okay, because people are going to be looking up to you. Okay, you're going to be the, the disciples who became apostles, as it was in the Bible. You know, disciples becoming apostles may, means that they've been, they continue to grow. They continue to grow. Every day they grew. Every week they, have, they were better than the week before. Every month they were better than the months before. We must continue to demonstrate 
growth. You don't want to be someone who will come to the altar and minister. And then someone in the congregation is like, you that I know very well. You that I know very well. You know, they can't even receive the word because we are not honest in our report. But I'm praying that as the Spirit of God continues to abound in us, that we shall continue to demonstrate the power of God in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Our attitude, our character will back up, you know, the things that we preach. You know, God will perform miracles, signs and wonders through our, our mouths in Jesus' name. Amen. So we must understand these things because they're very important. You can be like, you know what, I don't care what people think about me. While that is true to some extent, it's also important at least to have a dimension of good words spoken of you. <laughs> if you know what I mean, you can just say, you know, I don't care what anybody says. You know, you may not like your boss, your boss may not like you, praise God, but at least your boss should be able to say you are hardworking. Yeah. Your boss should be able, to be able to say you are punctual, if you know what I mean. Your boss should be able to say, uh, you know, you have, uh, what's it called now? You, you're, you are a people person, you know, you are, you are sociable and things like that. Your boss should be able to say some good things, you know, you know, except you have a very mean boss, which most people have sometimes, praise God. Amen. So very important for us to be there. And then the other thing I want to talk about also today is you must not be a novice. Praise God. You must not be a novice. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 3. Passion is not enough. Desire is not enough. Desire is good, but it's not enough. 1 Timothy chapter 3. That someone is passionate for something that's not what is going to help them to accomplish whatever it is they are passionate about. Praise God. They still need to do some things. You know, there are certain things that must still be, you know, observable in their lives. Oh, that I want to get married. That's not enough. Do you know about marriage? If you know about marriage, you got to study what marriage is. Praise God. Learn what marriage is. You know, understand the, the depth of it. You know, the length of it, the width of it, before you go into it. You know, you want to build a house, you desire to have your own property, you want to build it with your own specification. You better know how specifications are uh, analyzed very well, so you don't give wrong specifications. You know, the Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 28, that if we want to build, we sit down, we count the cost, see if we have enough to finish it, praise God. But then we do our analysis, because that someone is passionate about something, it's not enough. Nehemiah was, God gave him passion to go and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He went back to God to get instructions, follow instructions. Praise God. He went to pray. He fasted. He prayed. He asked God for favor before the king. Praise God. And the king granted him favor. You know, he had to go again to the king for the king to speak a word to the governor. So by the time he will pass by the governor, everything will go smoothly. You know, things like that. It's very, very important that we have, uh, we go beyond just being passionate. Oh, I would love to. This is something I love. I feel like I'm called to teach. I feel like I'm called to serve. I feel like I'm called to be a worker. That's not good enough. Yeah. You have to understand what it takes to be able to survive as what you desire. You know, in the area where you desire. Praise God. And that's what the uh, first month chapter 3 is trying to explain to us here. Let's look, let's look up together. First month chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, okay? If a man desire the office of a bishop, now bishop there, you know, can be an apostle, can be a pastor, can be a teacher, can be an evangelist, can be a prophet, can be a worker, just every one of us who are seven. Every one of us seven, praise God. Okay, it's a good desire. It's a good desire. But, look at verse 2. Is it responding? I want us to read this together. I want to go. The bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, hard to teach. So, I can't just say I desire for someone from from some member of the church can just desire to be a bishop. He's got to be able to demonstrate these things. 
Praise God. He's, be able, he's got to be able to demonstrate these things. These are the qualifications. These are things that God expects us to have. And I remember we read the part that says, the man must be of honest report. He must be of honest report. So we grow in, into these things. We are mindful of these things. Okay, we are the type of people that we shouldn't be reminded to pay our tithes. Hallelujah. We are the type of people that we shouldn't be reminded to give offerings. I was speaking to Brother Peter the other day. Brother Peter said he was on his way and he forgot his offering. How, how profound is that? He said he forgot his offering. He had to go to the ATM to get his offering. Can you imagine that? That's someone who understands ministry. That's someone who understands purpose. I was going somewhere myself. I had to go back to get my checkbook. I can't go here and not give. Do you understand? So we are different. We think differently. We, we can't compare ourselves with just ordinary vendors. We are different. So when you look at uh, Joel Austin's uh, ministry given to him by God, you know, and I call him Daddy T.D. Jake's uh, ministry and many of the great men and women of God that God is using all over the world. When they begin to preach on Sundays, you don't see them when they are with their workers. You don't know who are the people doing some things on the ground. You just see the good parts. Of course, when you serve, it's a good part too. Okay? When people are serving by the, uh, at the security stand, helping people to park their cars very well, trust me, they are serving the most. Because they are missing out on major things in the sanctuary. They understand purpose. Amen. They understand this thing. So I want us to, whatever we are doing, I want us to be, to be effective in it. And I pray God will help us to be effective in it. Amen. Amen. And that's why the foundation is very crucial. That's why we are having this class that we are having. That's the reason why we are having this class. Because we want to make sure we have the right perspective. We must have the right perspective. And I'm believing God that we're going to ordain new sets of ministers very soon. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now what you say, a bishop then must be blameless. And I have like two more minutes. A bishop then must be blameless. In other words, a worker. Say I'm a worker. I must be blameless. Must be blameless. Ah, you must be blameless. The husband of one wife. You cannot desire to have two, you know, two women like some people do. You cannot. If the enemy brings such desire, just rebuke it in Jesus' name. And if you're a woman, you cannot desire to have two husbands. If the enemy brings some desire, just rebuke it in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what you do. We must be vigilant. I've heard of some of us share with me how sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night. In fact, recently, Brother Aria and I will have some conversation, and Brother Aria will tell me how sometimes in the middle of the night, the Lord will just inspire him to wake up and will be praying. Vigilance. You are not ordinary anymore. You're not ordinary anymore. You can't love sleep. Mm. Oh, you can't love sleep so much that you just sleep, 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 sleep. You should question yourself. When you see that you're sleeping too much, even in a day, you should question yourself. If you're sleeping too much, you should not, you should not be sleeping too much. Hallelujah. You must be effective. Say, be sober of good behavior. Can you say good behavior? Good behavior. You must have good behavior. When you are driving, your behavior must be good. Whatever you're doing, you gotta be good. You gotta be good. It's not enough to have passion. Oh, I wanna teach. Oh, I wanna minister. Oh, I wanna share this. I wanna do that. There are things that you must do first. Praise God. And that's why verse one, go back to verse one. Verse one tells us that this is a true saying. If you desire the office of a bishop, it's a good thing. You desire a good work. But, you gotta put these things in check. I'm just gonna borrow five minutes. I'm gonna borrow five minutes before service will start. Praise God. He said, "Be sober of good of good behavior, given to hospitality. Hospitality. You must be you must be hospitable. You must be able to care for people. When the flocks of God comes in." You know, when the people come into church, you must be able to show them care, show them love. Love all people with the love of God. You must be able to show them care. Hospitable. There was a time that, you know, 
angels appeared to Abraham, right? And the Bible said they made a feast for them. I don't know if you remember that story. It made, you know, made some bread for them. Amen. You know, you must be hospitable. Remember that woman also who, who noticed that the man of God always came around. And she went to ask her husband, this man of God always came around. Can we prepare a place for him to, to you know, to rest? You must be hospitable. The, hospi the hospitality part, I'm going to focus it more on members of the church. The people that we are helping to grow in Christ. Okay, we must care for them. We must love them. Okay, no matter how many times they make mistakes, we must love them. We must love them. Of course, there are, dis yeah, there are disciplinary actions that have to be put in place. And for all of us in this room, you know, God forbid, if anybody does something that they're not supposed to do, they're going to be disciplined. Praise God. Those who are on this forum. Because we have to be accountable. We have to be accountable. Those who are not on this forum, who are not, you know, who have not been appointed to be able to lead other people to serve, if they do anything, there's no discipline for them because they don't have the platform that you're going to have. Praise God. They don't have the platform that you're going to have. We're just going to continue to love them, continue to, until they grow into where you are at this point. Praise God. You know, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Bible that says that, you know, the word of God is profitable for doctrine. Who, who remembers where to find that in the Bible? I believe in Second uh, Timothy. All right, I'm going to sh sh share that with you in a second. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. All right, let's look up for a second. Want to go? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. In a very important, it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Hallelujah. Very, very important. There will be correction. Okay. Those of us who are going to have the platform, we have to be receptive, you know, you know, receptive to correction. Okay, we have to be receptive to correction. Reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. As you know, this is a uh, war, you know, word-based ministry. We don't teach anything outside of the word of God. You know, in, in 